shoulder pain isn't caused in the shoulder. And for many of the times it can be caused from a collapsed rib cage, then the upper ribs start to internally rotate, which is making a weak foundation for the shoulder joint. But there's this other area that is often overlooked, and this is the arms. Now the arms are directly connected to the shoulder joint, and then this will directly affect the traps and the neck. So any area within the shoulder, the traps, and the neck that are in pain, many of the times it can be caused from the arms as well. So this is something we don't want to avoid. We need to address this. But we also have to understand that our connective tissue and our muscles directly influence this. So for example, if I am pronated for majority of the day, meaning palms facing down, working on my laptop or texting, then the fascia starts to get used to this negative alignment. Now imagine you're now starting to go to the gym and you're starting to do other activities, but you're locked in this alignment that's only gonna be building yourself and strengthening this negative alignment more powerfully. If I were to grab onto your hand and then I'm going to twist it internally like this and start pulling, if I do that for a day or a week or months, even years, you're gonna eventually start feeling a lot of shoulder pain. But the cause of this was me grabbing onto the hand. So this is just a very simple direct analogy so that you understand that where you feel pain isn't where the pain is necessarily being caused. What we need to do is first, release the connective tissue, release your fascia. This is your three-dimensional matrix that holds all systems, cells, structures, muscle fibers in your body together. So if we don't release and we just try to strengthen more so in a correct alignment, you're still locked and it's really hard to start to retrain the fascia. So first we need to release the fascia system. Next we need to start training the fascia and the muscles into a new alignment. And that's through corrective exercises, some movements, but also some tips I'm gonna be showing you on how to perform some exercises more efficiently to allow the shoulders to be rested and seated into that proper alignment. Let's begin with this routine. If you are in shoulder pain, you're experiencing shoulder pain, and you've tried some of my other videos that are directly working in the rib cage and the shoulder, we also want to be working in the arms. So all you need is your rolled up towel, and let's get started with our first position. First off, if you have pain more in a specific shoulder, let's start there. So grab your rolled up towel and we're gonna be positioning the towel directly under the tricep in the upper arm. So let's lay on that side. I'm gonna be referring more so to the left side and bring your left tricep directly over the towel like this. It's similar to that armpit position I show, but just a little bit further down the arm. And now what we wanna do, you can try bending your elbow, resting your head in your hand, but we wanna start connecting to the breath. As you inhale, your belly and your rib cage should be expanding. As you exhale, the rib cage and the belly should be getting smaller. We wanna be breathing through the diaphragm. Now, we also wanna be searching for sensations, and some of these sensations can also feel like pain, which is normal. As long as we're breathing through the pain, we're starting to create a release and then an improvement of blood and oxygen flow into this area. So now that you've started to settle in, let's start to move. And when I mean move, move very slowly. The slower you move, the deeper you're going to be getting into these positions. So now you can slowly start to straighten or bend the arm a little bit more. You can start to drop the hand down towards either in front of you or behind you. You're really in control of where you wanna search and how you want to search. But as soon as you find a new area of pain, spend some time there. You're gonna find these areas that they could feel like knots, areas of compression, and that's really important to find within your body because you're unique on how your tissue grips and holds. We're all unique, so that's why you need to be the one finding your pain in your body. We wanna be spending a minimum of three minutes in each position, and this can be longer. If you wanna stay for five, even up to 10 minutes, that's completely fine. You're in control. Now, once you spent about three to five minutes here, nice and slow, we're going to exhale up and off and move into our next position. For many of us, our forearms are very locked and compressed. And this can be the more inner portion or the lateral portion of your forearm. We're gonna be focusing more on this lateral portion. So what I want you to do is bring your arm to your lower rib cage, just like this. Excuse this extremely high table and low chair here, but this is what you will look like. And then you wanna have the towel more vertical to your body. 
and nice and slow, you're gonna be bringing your forearm directly over top of the towel. You're also gonna feel this in your rib cage because we're applying all this pressure directly in. Now what we wanna do is connect back to that breath. As you inhale, expand your belly and your rib cage. You should be feeling more tension building as you're doing this just with the layout of this position. And then when you exhale, make the belly and the rib cage nice and small. Once we started to settle in for about a minute or so, either the pain will be increasing a little bit or maybe you're gonna start getting used to the pain and it'll start to subside. So once the pain has started to subside a little bit, we can start applying a little bit more pressure. We can start moving very slowly. You can even start creating some rotations with your hand and your wrist. Another suggestion is opening and closing your hand, making a fist and then opening your hand and creating that expansion. And you're gonna notice that's directly connected to the forearm. So we also need to create some of the movement in the hand and also release the hand, which will be the next position. Once we spent about three to five minutes in this position and you've been searching for your own pain, then we can very nice and slowly exhale up and off of this position. Now we're moving into the hand position. This is very relaxing, fairly easy to get into as well. You're gonna be lying flat on your back, bend your knees, and now what we're gonna do is lift the pelvis and the butt off of the air, position the towel directly under your butt and your hand directly over the towel. So it's gonna go towel, then your hand on top, and then it's gonna be the upper portion of your butt. You may even feel your sacrum is gonna be applying the pressure. And now we're gonna be using our body weight and gravity to be applying that pressure into the hand. And you can be working on the wrist, the lower part of your forearm, you can be working on the hand. I'm gonna let you explore these areas, and in fact, all of these areas do need to be released. So once we've settled in and you're connecting to that breath, you can nice and slowly start to search, bringing a little bit more of your body weight to the left or a little bit of your body weight to the right. Start searching and finding that pain. Once you find the pain, stay with that pain, and remember that breath rule. You always want to be breathing. You never want to be holding or restricting your breath. If it's too painful and you can't breathe in a controlled way, ease off and reconnect at a less intensity. So now that you've spent about three to five minutes here, nice and slow, exhale up and off. If you're affected by just one shoulder, sure, you can work just on that arm, but to help create some balance and even it out, I would recommend doing these positions on the other arm. For the exercise component, we're gonna be jumping into a different set, and I'm gonna show you some exercises and tips on how to align the arms and the hands properly, so I'll see you there. For this exercise, all you need is the floor. And let's focus on that left shoulder and that left arm to start. What we wanna do is start by externally rotating the arm to your end degree without forcing it too much. So it might only be 10, 20, maybe 90 degrees. I'm gonna to try to get to about 180 like this, but you come to your comfortable range. Grip your fingers into the floor and now push your shoulder away from your rib cage. So we're trying to create more space and protract that shoulder. Once we're here, we want to keep twisting the body as we're planting the hand here so that we're feeling a bit of a stretch. But as we're feeling the stretch and we're planted, I want you to keep pushing away and hold this for about five to 10 breaths. Make sure you're breathing through the diaphragm, you're expanding you're expanding your belly and your rib cage through that inhale, making it nice and small with that exhale. And then when you've performed the five to 10 breaths, come back and then release. Move everything around. You might notice that you're already feeling that you can <laughs> supinate that arm a little bit more rather than having it pronated. Perform three full sets of this with five to 10 repetitions. Some tips that you can integrate into your daily life, but also into the gym or any activities that you're doing, it's important to try to 
integrate more of the supine alignment. If you're doing a bench press, of course your arms are gonna primarily be in a prone alignment, but try integrating more of that supine alignment into other activities and into other exercises. If you're doing a row of any sorts, try to switch it from not only being prone, but some being more supine. That's gonna help train this alignment. Now I'm not saying don't do any that are prone. We wanna be able to train the body in all of these different alignments and positions. So if you're even doing a deadlift, for example, I'm not gonna say if you can deadlift 400 pounds to just automatically switch it to the supine alignment, that can be applying a lot of stress on the forearms and the biceps. Try starting off with lighter weight and performing deadlifts from this alignment, similar to if you're doing some sort of lat pull downs, don't always have it from a prone alignment, supine, even a straight arm pull down. Try not to do it from a prone, but also integrate the supine alignment. So these are some tips that you can integrate throughout your training periods, but also throughout the day when you're just doing things, try to be more conscious of your palms being a little bit more forwards. Now I'm not necessarily saying walk with your hands forwards like this all the time, even though that is proper anatomical alignment, but try not to have them closed off and in that prone position throughout the day. Try to be a little bit more conscious because as soon as you start doing this, you're gonna notice a direct change in your shoulder alignment. So I hope these tips help and to break down this routine for you, this is what you're going to follow. So first, we're gonna be doing that upper arm position with the rolled up towel for that fascia decompression. We're gonna spend about three to five minutes there. Then we move on to the lateral forearm position for another three to five minutes. And next, we move on to our final fascia decompression exercise, which is that wrist and hand position on your back. Again, spend three to five minutes there. Now this is up to you if you're wanting to perform that on the other arm as well. Focus primarily on the shoulder that has more issues. Next, we want to do that exercise I showed on the floor to start strengthening and stretching and unwinding the shoulders so that we can bring it more into that supine and externally rotated alignment. Of course, be conscious with these tips on how you're training so that you're integrating more of that supine alignment throughout your training periods and throughout the day. That is everything for this video. Thank you so much for tuning in. And if you have any questions or comments, just leave them in the comment section below. Make sure you subscribe, like this video, and I look forward to seeing you in the next video.